Lopez wants it away. And it's hit deep to left center. Andrew Jones on the run. This one has a chance. Home run. Mike Piazza and the Mets lead. Gentlemen, Mets fans of all ages, here is your host, Nick Durst. Hello, Mets fans. Welcome back to another edition of Believe in the Mets right here on the Believe Podcast Network and across all of the Believe in the Mets social media platforms make sure you're following us everywhere and then that you subscribe on youtube if you haven't already done so it's an exciting time for the first time this offseason i am thrilled to come on here i'm in total absolute utter shock it has happened the mets they waited out they waited out in free agency and at the 11th hour or the 11th day on the 21st day of the, of the, of the third month it happens it happens and finally, the Mets sign J.D. Martinez. He's finally a New York Met. Joining me at this time to discuss it. I'm sure he's happy. He's got to be happy about it like I am. So joining me, he's been with me before. He's a good friend of the show, good friend of mine. The Subway to Shea podcast host, Anthony Rivera. Anthony, where were you when you heard the news? I was, a Met. yeah, yeah. I was uh, editing a uh, podcast a special episode that I'm doing a betting preview that's going to launch uh, around midnight. And uh, then the news came out. So I had to stop. I had to create a short that I could post on YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok. Did all of that, got that all out of the way. And uh, now I'm here with you. And not only am I happy that we signed JD Martinez. I got to see you smile for the first time uh, in a while. So that made me extremely happy. And I'm happy to see that you're happy as well. And this is a, this is a, this is a big step for the New York Mets uh, in the right direction. A lot of people may say, oh, maybe they're blocking Mark Vientos or, you know, Brett Beatty and stuff like that. The Mets needed a bat and Vientos, Beatty have really not well Beatty's been playing a little bit better Vientos has had a couple home runs but really hasn't you know grabbed that DH role you know and and, and taken it so it, neither has G-Man Choi or um Luke Voigt and uh, DJ Stewart another one who I I could have told you that this was coming with DJ Stewart I mean I he he had two good weeks in August and then he went back to the player that he was beforehand I like DJ Stewart I hope the best for him, but uh, this is the right move at the 11th hour. Like you said, a couple of days were what? Not even a couple of we're a week away from opening day. And the Mets really needed to make a move here to, for the first time, I think in, in this franchise's history or in the time that Pete Alonso has been a New York Met, he has protection in the lineup. I was looking at the guy's stats, uh, JD Martinez, 271 batting average. If you like batting average, 33 home runs, uh, 103 RBIs. That's what I was expecting when I see a DH. That's the stat line I want to see, not what we saw from Daniel Vogel back last season. We were going into the season without J.D. Martinez with the DH batting eighth. That is not ideal, and we're we're hoping to be joined by another guest shortly, Joe Calabrese from the Unum Right Podcast, a recent contributor for Sports Illustrated. He's supposed to be joining us. We'll see if we get him on. It's a late night, but everybody wants to talk some Mets baseball, of course. The hottest ticket in town, once again, perhaps. But <laughs> J.D. Martinez, listen, they get him. I really think maybe David Stearns listened to my last podcast and a lot of the podcast season because we're talking about Mark Vientos, the person I am, Matthew Orso, a MLB researcher, Emmy Award winner. He's like, I don't understand it, Nick. Why are they going with Vientos? And I said, it comes down to two words, exit velocity. They love his exit velocity. But, Anthony, exit velocity to me doesn't mean anything if eight times out of ten you're getting out and yeah. not putting the ball in play. So I don't care. Go with the proven better in here. Now, of course, negative Nick, he's got to look at it this way. Like, J.D. Martinez, is he going to reproduce what he did last year? 
in like a star studded lineup? Probably not. So his projections right now for this upcoming season are 22 home runs and 76 RBI with a 268 batting average. If that happens, that would be the second highest batting average on the team. Last year, Jeff McNeil was the first at 271. That would be third on the team in home runs. I don't even know if anybody else hit 20 home runs last year. Brandon Nimmo, right? So th- yeah. that's it. Lindor and Alonzo, they needed that power bat. And, and Alvarez, after- too. Alvarez, correct. But now for the first time in a long time, this lineup has depth. Jake's a J.D. Martinez. It has power. And you don't need to be running out there to 200 hitters in Beatty and Vientos. So that's a good thing. J.D. Martinez, he's a Met. It had to happen. How do you like that contract structuring? Hey, it works, right? Uh, the whole point is to try to limit the tax and they do that here uh 4.5 mil i think they're paying him for this year and then i think yeah. it's 1.5 mil from 2034 to 2038 so yeah. they figured out a way to yeah. structure it in in a la you know los angeles dodgers uh yeah, way of uh, yeah yeah they 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 uh they did it the dodger way in in structuring this contract and it works you know uh, I, i'm happy that they were able to get this done um I know you were a little less enthusiastic with the team the way it was. I was ready to do battle either way, uh, but this definitely changes things, right? Uh, I had the team at a low 78, 79 wins, at a high 82, 83 wins. That kind of changes for me now in between maybe now uh, 84 to 87 wins with J.D. Martinez. Mm-hmm. I think he, he he could be a difference maker if healthy because we know that that's a big thing, thing with J.D. Mask. Martinez. And like you mentioned before, you know, now you don't have to count on two kids right now. Uh, you know, at, at least going in with Brett Beatty, you can be comfortable knowing that J.D. Martinez is in the lineup and not having to worry. And, yeah, I, I'm in agreement with you with with the whole exit velocity talk. Uh, if it's an out, it's an out. You know, uh, it doesn't matter how hard he hits it. Right. You can say, oh, if he hits it hard enough, like nine times out of ten. But if he, if he's getting out, it, it like it right. doesn't matter. And he's like striking out, too. So he's, yeah. he's swinging and missing a lot. But, listen, Vientos, I feel better for the kid. They called him up last year. He barely played. Uh but when he has played, he hasn't shown to me that he's going to be able to handle it. So we'll see. He's going to get his opportunities. I'm sure I'll be in the lineup. Uh, we could talk about the roster construction because that this is going to throw things for a loop. Uh, I want to invite Joe Calabrese to the stage now. Joey Cal is the contributing writer hey. as of late for Sports Illustrated. And Fan Nation, of course, the co-host of the amazing You Know I'm Right podcast. And Joe, the Mets signed J.D. Martinez, and this is good news for the Mets. Uh, Maybe bad news for me because I might have to end my protest and go back to City Field for Mercury (laughs) Mets night. I need to get that Mike Piazza Mercury Mets thing jersey, of course. Bavarian sports fan, he comments that he's predicting J.D. Martinez is going to bat 288 with 35 home runs, 110 RBI, and 100 that's uh, going to put him in the running for MVP, perhaps. But that, that's that's more than he did last season. That would be better, right. and he's in a worse lineup. But, Joe, what do you think about J- just getting this one guy, J.D. Martinez, and so much depth to the lineup of the New York Mets? Yeah, who knew the Mets were going to make the last big splash signing before the end of spring? Here I thought the Yankees actually had a chance at Blake Snell. Uh, I'll tell you one thing. I think the Mets lineup is very interesting, and they're definitely going to score runs. They're definitely going to have games where they score five, six, seven runs. Now, they're going to probably have to win a lot of games seven, six. Yeah. But <laughs> uh, I, I think they are, from top to bottom, one to nine, they're, they're going to be able to hit. So, at the very least, about that. they'll be able to they'll, they'll produce. I, one I really to think nine. so. Yeah, one absolutely. Nine, we'll see. Yeah, there's some depth in that lineup. All right. So, Anthony, give me, give me what your lineup would be. How would you construct the lineup? Uh, well... Got to start off with Brandon Nimmo at the top. Um, if you want to give all your best players uh, more at bats, you would go Lindor two, Alonzo three, Martinez four. You could split that up with McNeil five, um, Alvarez six, Alvarez <laughs> six, 
Marte, oh, Marte seven, seven, Beatty eight, Bader nine. It, that, that, that's how yeah. I would kind of split it up. I, I know. Uh, I was I know thinking Marte that when doesn't I first want to move out of the news, pool. I said, I think they're probably going to go Nimo, Lindor, Martinez, Alonso as the top four. That was my initial thought process. Right. I think they're going to play it safe for now, and they're not going to thrust Alvarez into batting fifth. So that was my initial thought process. Uh, what I saw, I would like Jeff McNeil to bat second, but uh, I think that because it just lengthens it. If you got JD Martinez batting fifth, the lineup's lengthened because McNeil, he's going to get on base, I think. So I want as many people on base for Pete Alonso as possible because Pete Alonso is going to drive in the most runs on this team in a MVP type of season. Uh, Joe, what do you, what do you think about how JD Martinez? puts the lineup into shape. Well, I think you took my point away because I was going to say I would bat Jeff McNeil uh, second. Right? Okay. So I would go Nimmo, McNeil, Lindor, Alonzo, Martinez. And then you're right because Alvarez can comfortably hit in that six and seven spot. Uh, he's very, very good. Uh, less pressure on him. He'll produce in that spot. And now all of a sudden it's like you're just looking out to round out the bottom of the order with guys who have produced at the major league level before. and like I said, I, th- I think one to nine, it's a good lineup. This question comes up with the Yankees every single year because it's like they want to hit Judge second. Judge says he feels more comfortable hitting third. They have plenty of guys in that lineup now who can hit second in the lineup right in front of him. So, you know, it's it's always an interesting argument to hear yeah. who should bat second or third. I, I'm an old school guy. Like, I always think of the leadoff hitter as, like, got a, you need good contact. You need a guy who's good on the base pass, right? Yeah, but you know, so, you know what also makes sense, like, because you know, left, you know, lefty, lefty, right, right. Thing. You put, Lindor, a- put Lindor second; it gives you more flexibility. You can bat Jeff McNeil third, so you're not going. You know, you're not getting your all screwed there. Uh, Alonzo four. Alonzo has mostly batted fourth in his career, so he's comfortable there. Our guy Panoy King in the chat says Alonzo's going to get close to seventy home runs this year. Um, I mean, I think if he's healthy, like, I think 60 is a possibility. I don't know about 70. I think 60 is in the realm of possibility. You are he, delusional. Was on, he was on pace for 35, maybe 40. He's not going to hit 60 home runs. What do you mean? He was on pace for 60 last year until he got hurt. He still ended up with 40, and he missed games. So to say he's going to hit 35, at minimum, he's going to hit 40, okay? And he's going to walk here with the rest of the team. Guys, like, anyway, just like J.D. Martinez, this is just a, changes the dynamic of the team, but you still got to worry. I'm worried about the rotation. These ERAs are awful. A combined ERA of 4.69 is the average. So something's got to give there. You got to get Senga back if they want to compete. Uh, Pinoy says Alvarez, 35 to 40 home runs. I think I Where think, are all these home runs coming from? I think yeah. Alvarez could hit 30. He had 25 last yeah. year. Uh, sure, he could approach 30. I agree game. with that. So if you got – if if – if our chat's correct and you get you're getting 30 home runs from four players in Alonzo Martinez, Lindor, and Alvarez, you're cooking. Okay, you're gonna have a chance going into the postseason. Like I said, they're gonna score runs. And, we'll and now, with the, now with the expanded format, they'll I, I don't think they're gonna compete because that division's too hard. I don't think they can compete with the Braves and the Phillies. But I do think there is a scenario where they hang around, they win 84 games, 85 games, 86 games. And they kind of stay comfortably competing for one of those uh, lower wild card spots. Yep. Uh, Anthony, I think the key here to how good this mess offense is going to be is going to be Starling Marte. Yeah, it's two of them, actually. It's Marte and it's McNeil. Okay. See, I don't, I don't like McNeil that high in the order because he doesn't work the count. Like a like a like a Nimo does. Even Starling Marte works the count. And Door Alonzo uh, McNeil is always first p- pitch hitting. If he's not the 2022 McNeil at, at, at that top of the lineup, I don't know if I want him up there. If he's like last year or even 2021 where he was struggling, man, that's gonna be rough having him up there in in the lineup for that long. But but yeah, M- Marte McNeil, those two guys uh, are gonna be needed to play like they did in 2022 if this team is going to go anywhere uh, and, and sniff the playoffs. Well, I also think Brett Bay needs to do better than bat 210, 212. Yeah. Now and there's less pressure on him. Less pressure, but the spot Way, less, so way less pressure. Yeah, but he's going to be hitting 789. That's pretty... Well, he's going to hit 789 regardless, but yeah, now he's going to hit 8. 
Harrison Bader, maybe this guy stays healthy. They've been preaching about the defense, the defense, but I don't know. This this I is like, like this I move. Like like the, the this moves. He's a listen. He's good defensively. He was clutching the postseason with the Yankees, but he can't stay on the field. Right. So the question's going to be: once he gets hurt, or once Marte gets hurt, are they going to call up Drew Gilbert and go for it, or are they going to say, "All right, Taylor, you're in. It's your turn." Or McNeil, you go out to the outfield. We'll play Joey Wendell because that that that's going to tell you a lot. You know what to do with the service time. But I'm absolutely floored they did this JD Martinez move because all season I was saying they're just going to you know see what happens. You know whatever. This signals to me they're actually going to try. Maybe we'll see what happens at the trade deadline. I still have the mindset of if they are like 500 or in the third wild card spot, they stay put. I'd be very surprised if they end up buying uh, at the trade deadline. The Bavarian sports fan wants to know if we could see a trade with the Mets signed Gina Martinez, Tamar to the staff. Uh, and Pinoy wants to know, could the Mets trade Jeff McNeil during the trade deadline if Acuna do better than McNeil? Uh, well, I'll answer this first, and then we'll go to Anthony. The JD signing... I don't think they're going to add more to the pitching staff via trade because I don't think anybody wants Mark Vientos and you're going to be selling him so low right now. So what are you going to be actually getting in return? Are the Mets going to trade McNeil during deadline? If he's doing good, I don't think so. Um, so uh, is a, if Acuna is doing better in the minors, they're going to boot McNeil? No, because Okay, Acuna's doing good in the minors. So did Beatty. So did Viento. So did so many others. So until you do it in the majors, I don't think so. But what do you think, Anthony, about, about the, the potentials here of some trades with the J.D. Martinez signing? I mean, it definitely depends on where they're at by the trade deadline. Like, are they are they in prime position to, you know, make a playoff spot and then, then I could see a McNeil going for some type of pitching and where they bring up one of the kids. I don't even know. I don't even know if Acuna is that ready yet. He's not, um, uh, he's, uh, he's got the name. That's about it. I think it's, he needs to learn a new position too. He's never yeah. played second base. If you're going to see any of these p- kids from the minor leagues, it's going to be drew Gilbert in the outfield. Yeah. And then it's going to be one of the pitchers. Yeah. Christian Scott is looking ready. Dom's uh, Dom Hamill had an okay game. I uh, want Lavender today. up in the pen immediately. Nate Lavender, that's another one that could come up here. Uh, am I missing someone? Dom Hamill, Mike uh, Vassell. Vassell. Well, those are the, those Wait, are maybe the about four or five guys you could see coming up here right now this year. Acuna is going to have to be like killing it in AAA, like uh, Beatty did the uh, the year before. Right. Or he, if listen, if he's killing it in AAA, like Ronnie Mauricio, we'll see him in September. So I, yeah. I wouldn't worry about that right now. Joe, you're going to love this question. That the Met, you know, they structured the deal. Of the Mets, they're paying four and a half million this year. Overall, it's nine million with the luxury Steve Cohen tax. But you know, now the question becomes: Is Jordan Montgomery going to be a Met? Are they going to work out a similar deal here? <laughs> What's Jordan Montgomery going to do? Because the Mets could need him. They could use him when the they rotation. They could use him absolutely. And a lot of Yankee fans want Jordan Montgomery signed, and I think he's a good fit. Listen, I, I think right now. The Mets, Stearns is not really going to add too much more to this roster. If he signs Jordan Montgomery, that kind of like the, that's like the 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 only other available move that he can make. Because again, he's not trading for more pitching. All the other starters are off the market, right? So it's like you're kind of locking into this team, right? But if you sign Jordan Montgomery and you overachieve. Now you're stuck with the bag on some of these guys because a lot of these guys are on one year deals, as you keep alluding to, Nick, right? So it, well, it's that, a very that, different. Not to cut you off, but I think the one of the main reasons they got JD Martinez is obviously the price fell. But David Stern's able to go to Dave Cohen and say, listen, the reality is our pitching is what it is. We'll bring JD Martinez in. Maybe we catch smash. lightning in a bottle and, we, and the team smashes. But if not, JD Martinez is probably going to hit and someone's going to want him at the trade deadline. So Absolutely. I'll trade him. We'll get a piece. And we dumped the salary, and you don't have to pay the luxury tax at right. the end. Absolutely. So it was kind of a no-brainer. Yeah, 100% no-brainer. It was a savvy out. move. It was a savvy move because they're going to get a, a lot of value out of him because he's going to produce. And if they decide to trade him or not, they'll be able to recoup value and get the money off and save 
again, the tax yeah, bill. Same thing with move. all the starters they signed and, yeah. you know, the pitchers. Now, we'll give this one to you, Anthony, from Panoy King. Jet Williams in center second half. I mean, maybe if like 15 guys get injured. I don't see yeah. it happening. He's not ready for the majors this year. Drew Drew Gilbert to me is the only one that's in the outfield that's going to come uh, up. Uh, Jet Williams. Jet Williams is kind of in the same. He needs to learn how to play. He hasn't played center field. No, he hasn't played much of the outfield, but he's like kind of in the same realm right now as Acuna. Like they're not that like they're going to have to have like a super strong season because they're only in double A right now. There's going to need to be injuries. Yeah. Yeah. They're going to start the season in Triple A, so don't expect them up right away. Drew Gilbert, I think he's the real deal. We could see him up if things work. Uh, Jeff T. Rosado says this is the best yeah. move of the year so far. Yes, it definitely is the best move of the year so far. Obviously, changed the whole dynamic of the team. Um, I want to talk about two moves the Mets did not make that actually look pretty good today. The Mets maybe dodged a bullet. Not signing Yoshinobu Yamamoto and Shohei Otani. Joe, I know you have a lot to say about this. <laughs> we'll give you the Otani angle and then oh, yeah. get the Yamamoto angle. I don't have to say much. It doesn't pass the sniff test, does it? Mm-hmm. It does not. There's a lot of there are a lot of components to this, right? But the figure is what doesn't pass the sniff test. So was he betting on himself to sign with the Angels? Is is that where this all started? You mean plus, South Dodgers? Bet to South no, Dodgers. he was plus twelve hundred originally to sign with the Angels. Oh, you so. don't you don't accumulate that much money like that. That is like over a period of time. So you're saying Otani was doing the bets through the interpreter? Absolutely, I'm saying he's so where, a, so where's this he's a degenerate like the rest of us. The fraud angles coming in. I don't know about that. Yeah, all I can say as before anything. This is about, this is a huge problem for baseball if they investigate this and they find more stuff. You got to suspend huge them. Problem, right? Or you got to put heroes in the Hall of Fame. It's really absolutely. This, no. is, this is going to open up such a can of worms. But that's why I'm interested in this. How about like you know ESPN? It's like. All right, uh, welcome to, to Betty ESPN. We're going to now go to our DraftKings specialist live from the FanDuel studio. Jeff Passon, what's going on with this Otani news? Their it's whole business model. They, I, listen, I don't want to get too far. We're not getting into betting, but I just, I just want to say this before you Andy can't push, about, uh, You can't push the gambling angle and then have something like this. It, it, it makes no sense. Right. I, I see we got more comments in the chat. We'll get to them in a second, but guys. If this was the Mets and they had Yamamoto and Otani, they'd be getting absolutely crushed today. Destroyed. The Dodgers oh, are they get the, first a, game the Dodgers get a pass because they're in LA. It's all laid back. And they're in freaking South Korea. Oh, what, what a way to start the, the national pass time in South Korea. But Anthony, well, how about that Yamamoto sure. debut? I'll be debut. No, like Joe said, it's the it's the first uh, game of the season. Obviously, if it was the Mets, yeah, they would be like it'd be like the end of the world. They spent all this money. Um, he hasn't kind of been lights out this spring, so uh, this little this kind of adds on to that. And I'm rooting for him to be a bust since he turned on the Mets. <laughs> he used the Mets with the Steve Cohen effect. You know what? It, we'll see what happens with him. His adjustments going to be an interesting thing to watch throughout the year. I usually let the Dodgers play well throughout all of the season yeah, and then let them the let them fall apart in the playoffs. That'd be fine playoffs. with me. But yeah, man, he he's uh one game in and he he really struggled against the Dodgers team. Yeah, man, did, right with the Mets. Only got one inning in there. So well, you know we'll see what happens. We'll yeah, see no what happens. I don't want to put too much into it just yeah, yet. The Mets would have got crushed if they had Yamamoto and Otani today. Bavarian sports fan wants to know he remembers what Otani said he didn't want to sign with a big market team because of the media. Boy, oh boy, well, this is going to be covered, and maybe he get, he's going to get a new interpreter, I guess, for him and Yamamoto, and uh, yeah. answer some questions. Uh, Michael Chap, big New York Rangers fan, love to say it. Anthony does not, of course. He wants to know, do you actually think they investigate him thorough or sweep under the rug? I see them pushing under the rug, sadly. Uh, what do you guys think? And I think they're going to have to investigate, but they're probably pushing under the rug. MLB's not investigating. Oh, only the FBI kind of is. Okay. I thought the no. member was going to do an internal investigation. No. Not, not on the not on MLB's Golden Boy. 
They wouldn't do that. I'll tell you something. Like I said, if they find anything additional regarding this, this is going to be a huge headache. It's going to open up a lot of can of worms. It's going to open up a lot of discussion topics and questions yeah. surrounding betting, surrounding gambling that we've all that like have. It's been on our radar for the last 20 well, years. Well, listen, right? listen, listen. Speaking of betting, I mean, right now the Mets over under probably changed. So I don't know what it's probably what it's probably I want to say it was 83. Let's say it's 84 and a half now, 85 and a half. Um, I was going to say 83 and a half. So it's all right. So anyway, like, that shows the degenerate in me. Listen, I'm not I'm not a better as you guys know, but I'd probably still bet the under. But we've got a great new sponsor. Uh, they love our they love my betting friends. Where it's like you, Joe and betting and anything is allowed with this app. Sports games. Who's fast? That's what the. Cut app allows everybody to do. You can make your own bets up. They'll, let, they'll give you some odds. It's a peer-to-peer social betting platform that's literally in 40-plus states. has customizable odds, tracking capabilities, and an entire social network with group chats, user profiles, and rewards, all payments. No need for Venmo. What can we bet on? Go bet on the Mets now with the over-under. Use the promo code Believe Mets for your 10% off offer right now. Capital B-L-E-A-V. M-E. ETS lowercase on the ETS and go place your bet, put your money where your mouth is and see what you're going to say. What do you think, Joe over under on the Mets twins? Now, where, where do you, you're set 83 and a half. What do you I think? Where are you going to land? Are you going to go on the under 83 under. or over 83 under only because they play in what? what I, what I think is going to be a difficult division, the Braves, the Phillies, the Marlins, three playoff teams from a year ago. Three teams that you can kind of probably, on paper, say even with the Shady Martinez move are better than the Mets. But if the Mets finished in second or third place ahead of one of those other two teams, that wouldn't necessarily shock me. But it's just it's it's an incredibly tough division. All right, another comment here from Pinoy King, our buddy here. Do we need to sign one sort of next year if we have Jet Williams who can play center and Gilbert? Yes. yes. <laughs> You, I'm taking the major league, you know, superstar. Let's let's do it together, guys. Donner of Daniel Bryan. Yes, 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 yes. Well, Joe wants him to go with the Yankees, of course. But like, course. I am taking Juan he's Soto not, over Jet Williams and Gilbert. Can I say something? Would you turn down 400 million on your next contract? You might get 500 million. Would you turn that down? You're not going to do that. He's going to walk. I, oh, it's he's not, not going to be a Yankee next year. He's like, not going to be a Yankee next year. Bid. Listen, I, I personally wouldn't rule out the Dodgers signing Juan Soto. I think they'll find that's a way. Bad. That's bad for baseball. They'll defer that's the, so bad for they'll baseball. They'll get like a 15-year, a $650 million contract. Even, they, even if they don't make win. $1 million a year or some BS. Even if they don't win year to year and they're a perpetual post-World Series choke, it's still bad for baseball. Michael Chaps got opening day. Can't wait to see JD Martinez in a Mets uni. Probably going to freeze his ass off, though. It'll definitely be cold. But I was talking to uh, an MLB insider today, Pat Regazzo, a friend of ours. And I said, Pat, JD Martinez, is he going to be on opening day roster? I mean, he might need an extended spring training. Is he going to be able to get ready in three, four days with enough at bats? I don't know. What do you think, Anthony? Do you think he's actually going to be on, on the opening day roster? I think it's it's not a guarantee. It's not a slam dunk. No, it, it's not a guarantee. I think he'll be on it, you know, for the pomp and circumstances so they can, you know, say his name out at City Field and everyone can cheer. I don't know if he even, like, is right behind Pete at the start. I mean, if he's got to get himself back into place, he might yeah. have a, a little less at bats when he when he comes to uh, when it comes to the season beginning. So, uh I don't. I don't know, man. It's a good question. It's definitely a good question to see if they I will mean, carry him. Like, that's a great question. I got to go investigate. So, what if you see a story pop up on Sports Illustrated about that? Give me some credit because I inspired. I inspired. <laughs> that was my. That was my first thought with the contract signing. But uh, we also have another great comment here from my man or your man, M E Z B X. Yeah. Because I like Clifford more than Gilbert. I Absolutely. love Clifford. Clifford is gonna mash. I think lefty. He's gonna hit. 30 plus home runs, but he's two years away. So I think Gilbert can make an immediate impact this year. But Anthony, what do you think? 
Hawks. Yeah. Clifford, he's he's a, he could be a, a future stud for the Mets. All I, w- I was hearing about, uh, especially after the trade, was like how much of a gem Clifford is, and I didn't realize it because everyone keeps talking about Drew Gilbert. But then you watch the the uh, that that spring breakout game, and you see him hit, and the way he mashes the ball, Ryan Clifford may be the the steal of that Verlander trade. Yeah. So and uh, the I other, agree. The other thing about that is Verlander hurt. That's gonna you know, right now the Mets sixty nine million in dead cap this year, but Verlander is not going to hit his innings, so he's not. Is it one hundred twenty? Yeah, he's, he's, I think it's one hundred and twenty, maybe one hundred thirty. He's not going to hit the innings, so that means that money will come off the books. They won't have to guarantee the contract next year. They won't have to pay him. They're not going to have to pay Max Scherzer. They're going to have money to play with. They're going to be able to go after a Soto or Corbin Burns. They need to get some starters. Pinoy King, he says, if we if you could only sign one of Soto or Alonzo, who would you sign? Now. Joe, I'll I'll go with this one to you first because you were just uh you know you're an outsider looking in here. You're not a fan. Give me your answer because my answer is probably gonna be kind of surprise, gonna surprise some people. You gotta but sign maybe Soto. Me and Anthony are gonna do the same. You're gonna sign Soto, okay? I that any smart GM would sign Soto. Alonzo means a lot to the franchise, yes. But when you look at the overall picture, age difference, where he fits moving forward. You know, unfortunately, he's probably a better fit long term for the franchise than Alonzo is. And I know you're going to say Soto because you're, you're thinking the same thing that I would. You're wrong. I'm going to, first of all, the answer has got to be both of them. Yeah, absolutely. Right? Sure. Yeah. Sure, but, you- but, 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 but here's why. Okay. So here's the good Alonzo. It just means a lot more to have Alonzo because number one, he's on a Hall of Fame path as a Met. Number two, it means lots of the fan base to have another homegrown guy. And the ticket sales are going to be huge. Now, the thing is, like, if you're replacing Pete with Soto, you're not, I mean, maybe you're getting better in the long run, but you're not all of a sudden like, okay, now we're going to win the World Series because you have Soto. You're taking away power numbers and stuff, right? And the Mets, you know, they have all these prospects in the outfield, whatever prospects. But uh, I would rather, if, if it's an either or scenario, Joe, I'll take Alonzo. And then with the, the the extra four hundred million dollars, I'll spend that and and go get three starting pitchers that the team desperately needs. So that that's my logic there. What do you think? You hit it right on the nail. I I, I am going. I've said it before too. Even a couple of weeks ago, I'm going Pete Alonso here, and you save some of that money to spend on pitching and other needs that you have. Look, Pete Alonso is a, a really important part of this franchise. The Mets really never keep any of their homegrown guys, and like this is one of them that that should be a no brainer to keep. Yeah. Um, the power numbers are there, especially at City Field. We know what he can do at City Field, and you want players that can hack it for the Mets, and th- not a lot of them come through here like that, like like Pete does. And I, you know what? I don't even know what Juan Soto is going to be a Yankee uh, as a Yankee. Well, we that's the thing. Uh, you know, Juan Soto, he might not want to be in New York after this season, Joe, because if he's batting 220 in the first two months like he did in San Diego, you and the Yankee fans are going to be booing the heck out of him. So I don't know if he's got the skin for New York. We'll see. It's going to be an interesting summer because that, it's going to all be about where's Juan Soto, Juan Soto going. You know where Juan Soto is going to the highest bidder. I don't. <laughs> that's that's what I think is going to happen with Juan Soto. I uh, concur. Pinoy King wants to know maybe Clifford can be a replacement for Alonzo if he walks. What do you think? I think absolutely. I think that's what I think Clifford's going to play. He's a first baseman this season. Uh, I don't know about Alonzo necessarily walking, but I you know I've talked to Joe before on the show. Talk to you, Anthony. Listen, you could always uh, retain I, I Alonzo, think, sign Alonzo, make him the DH. I think Pete Alonzo is going to be traded this year this season so i don't think he's gonna walk i think it's, he's gonna be traded and then he's like i'm not coming back here you traded me so uh, it's gonna be the mets have to play well in the first half when they get through that london series against the phillies they need to be in a good spot otherwise i think david stearns who has no ties to pete alonzo or any of these guys he didn't draft them other than adrian hauser who he had in Milwaukee, he will trade whoever he's got to trade he's not gonna hesitate Guys, this has been fun. We've had 140 plus people tuning in nice. on the live stream. If you're listening to the podcast version, of course, make sure you head on over to the YouTube channel at Believe in the Mets and on all social media platforms, X, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. Go check it out there. You never want to miss any of the exclusive Believe in the Mets podcast. But you can finally believe in the Mets after a big move tonight. Anthony, tell everybody where they can find you and all of your Mets stuff as well. 
Yeah, my personal Twitter at Ant Rivera eighty six, and then you can follow me with the Subway to Shave podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify. I got a YouTube page as well, and uh, TikTok, Instagram, Twitter X, whatever you want to call it these days at Subway to Shave. That's it. All right, and uh, M Stoddard LM LGM says regarding Martinez, the words "punning physical" scare the hell out of me. Think Korea, Korea, very good point. That's yep. for sure. Uh, and Joe, where can everybody find? your baseball writing and your awesome podcast and your social media stuff. It's a great podcast. We'll start with the podcast that I co-host with you. You know, I'm right. You can find this on YKIR podcast, you know, our uh, podcast on YouTube, uh, starting to contribute again, be a sports illustrated fan nation contributor for the Yankees. So check me out there. And I uh, want to roll out. You're writing some articles too. You never know. You never know. Uh, yeah. So catch me over there. Uh, maybe I'll contribute for the Mets a little bit. Find me on X and Jay Calabrese one. All right. Remember, believe in the Mets on all social platforms and YouTube. You have to subscribe. I am on X at Nick underscore on Instagram at Nick's food and stuff. Guys, this has been great. It's been a lot of fun. We'll have to do it again. Let's hope for the best. And until next time, everybody, let's go Mets. Mets.